All right, let's continue with finding zeros and the complete factorization in section 3.3. So we have a fourth degree polynomial. So we'll have x minus c1, x minus c2, x minus c3, and x minus c4, right? There's four factors, but again, they might be repeats. So we could have a square power and then there's one less. Um, we know two of them. We have x, we have negative one is a zero, so that'll be x plus one. And we have two thirds is a zero, so x minus two thirds. And then we need to find the last two. So we're gonna go ahead and do long division or synthetic division to factor this. So I'm gonna start with the one. So negative one, we put the zero on the outside for the synthetic and the coefficients, three, one, minus 17, minus five, and 10. I'm gonna do synthetic a little faster now but pause if you need more time. So three, we multiply, we get negative three. Combine, we get negative two. Multiply, we get positive two. Um, combine, we get negative 15. Multiply, I get positive 15, and then we get 10. Multiply negative 10 and we get zero, which is good. No remainder means it is indeed a factor. So x plus one is a factor. We knew that, but now it's confirmed. If we don't get zero, we did something wrong. So now we have x plus one. And then we started with an x to the fourth, so this would be x cubed. So three x cubed minus two x squared minus 15 x plus 10, right? Remember this is always one degree less. So now I'm gonna to jump to the two thirds. And so I'm gonna divide two thirds just into the next polynomial. Basically, we're kind of working our way down. I don't wanna divide in the original um, because that's not gonna help me factor it all the way. So we're gonna do two thirds into the next polynomial. So three, negative two, minus 15, and 10. And we'll go ahead and do long division. So we get three. Multiply two thirds times three is two. We get zero. Multiply, we get zero. Combine, we get negative 15. And then negative 15 times two thirds. It should be negative 10, hopefully. Yep. Negative 10, which is what we want, right? No remainder. If we get a remainder, then it's not a factor and we did something wrong. Cool. So now we have x plus one from before. And now we have x minus 2 thirds, and then we have this new polynomial. <clears throat> so this one started at x cubed, now we're down to x squared. Basically we're shrinking it each time. So 3x squared, 0x minus 15. We're almost there. x plus 1, x minus 2 thirds, and then 3x squared minus 15. And then I think we can just solve this to find the remaining ones. 3x squared minus 15 equals zero. I'm gonna take out the three. So x squared minus five. So let's bring the three out front. It'll look nicer. And now we'll just solve x squared minus five. So x squared minus five equals zero means x squared equals five. So we're gonna get plus or minus root five. So if you factor out a constant, it doesn't disappear. That's like the a out front. So that three comes out front. So make sure you don't lose those constants out front. But we're gonna get x plus one, x minus two thirds, and then we get x minus root five and x plus root five. So that's our complete factorization it's a funny factoring, but since we have roots, but that's okay. That's our complete factorization. And the zeros are negative one, two thirds, square root five, and negative square root five. Cool. So let's do one final example. All right, so one more, same question. We're gonna find the remaining zeros and the complete factorization of four x to the fourth minus eight x cubed plus nine x squared minus eight x and plus five. 
And now we're given that negative i is a, is a zero. So this one's weird. Um, we are gonna have four factors again for degree four. And we know one of them is a negative i, so that'll be plus i. Um, the conjugate's also a zero, so that means x equals i is also a zero. So that gives us the second factor. And then we still have two more to find. So now this is up to you. I don't like doing long division or synthetic division with i. So we put negative i outside. We get 4, 8, 9. I'm doing this fast because I'm not going to do this. Right, but you bring this down, and now we get ugly i numbers. Right. I don't want to deal with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do long division instead, and you'll see in a second. If you're comfortable with this, go for it. But right now I'm going to get even more i's and i squared. Ah, oh. So I'm not going to do synthetic. If you feel comfortable with this, go for it. But I think I like my method better. But again, personal opinion. Um, so what's nice about i's is I can actually multiply um, these two terms out and it'll turn out nicer. So what do we get? We get x squared, we get plus ix, we get minus ix, and then minus i squared. So middle two terms cancel out, and then we get x squared minus negative 1 or x squared plus 1, meaning we get x squared plus 1 times some other factors. So rather than dividing by x minus i or x plus i, I'm going to divide by x squared plus 1. So we have 4x to the fourth minus 8x cubed plus 9x squared minus 8x plus 5 all over x squared plus 1. And so we do have to do long division because it's not linear, but I still think this is easier than doing synthetic with i's. So can't use synthetic because it's not linear. But I still think this is easier than dealing with i. Right, x is squared. This is why it's not linear. But if I can avoid that long division with the letter i, or the synthetic division with i, I will. So I prefer to do long division here. And that's okay. So x squared plus 1 on the outside. This will give us more practice. I haven't done this in a couple of videos. So we're doing long division because it's not linear. So 4x cubed divided by x squared gives me 4x squared. So we get 4x to the fourth plus 4x squared. When I multiply, and then we'll go ahead and subtract. So the sign becomes the opposite. We get plus 5x squared minus 8x plus 5. Just bring everything else down. The only thing changes is the x squared term. Let's divide 8x cubed. Negative 8x cubed divided by x squared gives me negative 8x. Multiply negative 8x cubed. And then times 1 brings me a negative x, so that goes over there. And then subtract, which changes the signs. 5x squared, those actually cancel out plus 5. Cool. And now 5x squared divided by x squared is just 5. We get 5x squared plus 5. So this is looking good. What happens when we subtract? We get no remainder, so that means it is a factor, which is what we expected. So now we know 4x to the fourth, this is the original function, minus 8x cubed plus 9x squared minus 8x plus 5, is x squared plus 1 times 4x squared minus 8x plus 5. And then rather than doing long division, I would just jump to the quadratic formula now that it's quadratic. Unless it looks really obvious to factor, then I would factor. But... Let's just factor this, if we can. Um, we need a product of 20 and a sum of negative 8. I think that's not going to work out. So let's do quadratic formula. 
So x equals negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So we get 8 plus or minus, um, what's that, 64 minus 80 all over 8, which is, so we get 8 plus or minus negative 16 all over 8. So 8 plus or minus 4i, right, 4 squared, and divide them both by 8. So make sure you're dividing them both, even if you don't show that step. So we get 1 plus or minus 1 half i. And so those are our remaining zeros. So the zeros are all imaginary. So on a graph, we don't have intercepts, but we do have zeros. They're just imaginary zeros. We get i and minus i from above. We get 1 plus 1 half i, and then we get 1 minus 1 half i. Those are all my zeros. And then factored form would be x minus i. We'll complete factorization. x plus i, x minus 1 plus 1 half i, and then x minus 1 minus 1 half i. All right. And then just distribute that negative sign to make it look a little nicer. And there were no constants out front on this one. X minus 1 minus 1 half i. X minus 1 plus 1 half i. So a complete factorization is going to look different than traditional factoring because we have i's or square roots. But there's four factors for a fourth power. And that's it. It's just a little time consuming with long division. Um, so I recommend using synthetic for linear. Um, anytime I have square roots or i's, I usually like to multiply them out and just use long division instead, just to avoid a really ugly synthetic division. So let me know if you have any questions.